Greetings, fellow Watford fans. Omar here, and it's time for the Yawns 10 Minute Tag on Watford at Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough 2, Watford nil. And yeah, you know, this game was a game that Watford needed to win. They began this game as the first game of six consecutive, very important championship matches. Of course, every championship match is important, but these six games really are, I think, markers of a season that may well define Watford's place in it by the end of the campaign. Now, Watford today coming in against Middlesbrough, a team who had dropped their last game, a team who prior to that had won four on the spin, Watford were charged with the responsibility of trying to get three points out of the Riverside Stadium. A team, Watford, who had not lost to Middlesbrough in almost 10 years, but that all went by the boards today as Watford did not play well. The defense and the energy of the defense was not good in this game. In fact, the whole balance from the defensive end to the middle midfield end to the front end of the pitch was all out of whack. They never really got comfortable. And these three parts of the pitch and these three units of Watford's football today were never in sync at all. There was a lack of fluidity to this particular display from Watford and a lack of energy and intensity. Watford did not match the energy or the intensity of Middlesbrough today, and it showed very clearly in the first half as there were lots of goal mouth scrambles. Hamza Chaudhry saved two goals for Watford today, and it should have been a 4-0 win at least for Middlesbrough. That's how bad it was for Watford. Full credit, though, to Middlesbrough, who played well, who bounced back well from their game against their bitter rival Sunderland in the derby match, where they had a man sent off. Watford did not match the intensity. They had to know Watford. Watford had to know that Michael Carrick was going to get his Middlesbrough side really focused for this game and that they were going to come out with a much better performance than they did against Sunderland. But Watford never met the intensity. They knew that they were going to have to deal with a Middlesbrough side that were playing very well under Carrick, a Middlesbrough side who I told you near the beginning of the season were not really at the bottom three team that they had been at that time. I told you that they were going to come good. And that's what they've done. And now they're in third place after this victory, a game that they well deserved. There was no question about it. They deserved to win. Watford, though, what were they doing on the pitch? I didn't see an identity today from the lads. And although there were two or three lads I thought were quite good and quite encouraging, Toby Adeyemo, the debutante, Henrique Araujo, and Martins, who I think is continuing to play very well. Aside from those three who showed the desire and the commitment and the determination and the passion in this game, no other Watford player really registered that kind of intensity or that kind of ethic. And as a result, you had a very unbalanced team today. I just did not like the way that this team acquitted itself. Uh, generally speaking, they really didn't know what they were doing out there. It was a pinball wizard affair in the defense. And for me, a lack of communication among some of these players and Hassan Kamara, his mistake in the 36th minute opened the door for Middlesbrough and Chuko Akpom, who was by far the man of the match for Middlesbrough today, and he scored the goal after 36 minutes. It was a defensive error from Hassan Kamara that let him in, and that was that, and that was 1-0. And then, just when it looked as if Watford were going to get into half time with a 1-0 deficit, it was a 2-0 deficit, a goal from Mikhail Force, the former Brentford man, who, of course, played much more centrally in attack for Brentford. But on the Middlesbrough side, he's on the right-hand side of the pitch. He scored from the right-hand side of the pitch, weaving in and scoring the goal, cutting through the Watford defence like a hot knife through butter to make it 2-0 Middlesbrough in injury time in the first half, a cardinal sin conceding goals in injury time in the first half. Watford had done that on a number of occasions this season, and it came back to bite them once again. So Middlesbrough coming into the half with a 2-0 lead, and that was really the game. There were some substitutions with Slavin Bilic, some good ones to begin with, at least at the start of the second half, and he brought on Araujo, who was, I thought, very good in the game. Adi Amo, as I said before, I thought was very good in the game, and also he brought on Bakunia, who came in in midfield, and Bakunia did what he could do but really, the game had really gone. And those three substitutions, particularly the first two I mentioned, were effective, lively. 
Martins had a chance, lively opportunity from him. He had a chance in the first half as well, should have buried it, and it would have given Watford a 1-0 lead. As it stood, though, they, they did not capitalize on that. In fact, they didn't score at all in this game. As a matter of fact, Saw had a chance before that, but he blazed it over the bar. His mind of Saw, who was in and out of this game, was poor in key moments, getting offside a number of times in build, basic build-up play. These are fundamental things that a footballer, especially a 35 million pound footballer, should be aware of. Aware of your offside. Be aware of the line. Be aware of your line. Hold your line. But, you know, Saw has not done that with any consistency during his time at Watford. He's a professional footballer, and any professional footballer has to be aware of where the line is when the ball is being passed. So, you know, that's one of the things about Saar today that wasn't as good. Now, he did create some things and did try to go forward at times, but it just was not enough. And I think the problem for Watford overall with the team is that when they were in possession in the game, they did not hold on to the possession as much as they should. They didn't enjoy possession. And I'm sure that was part of Michael Carrick's strategy for Middlesbrough today was to keep Watford off the ball as much as possible and press Watford as much as they could. And they did that, and it worked for the most part for Middlesbrough because Watford really did not lay any glove on Middlesbrough of any significance. They did have a couple of chances in the second half. Arao was one of them, tried to get in on goal, but the ball was just a little bit ahead of him. But aside from that, they really did not lay a glove on Middlesbrough in the second half, in fact, for most of this game at all. And Carrick got them, got uh, Watford, um, really neutralized Watford with his game plan. One of the things for me that was really strange about this game was the substitution that Slavin Bilic made around the 70-minute mark or just thereabouts when he took off Martins, who I thought, again, had a good positive game, was one of the only few players on the Watford pitch today who were positive, took off Martins to bring on Matty Pollock, down 2-0. I just did not understand why that move was made today. That's one of the substitutions, the only substitution to me that Slavin Bilic got wrong. I don't know why you're bringing in Pollock there in the 70-some-odd minute and you're replacing, taking off Martins. I, I don't see where that's coming from. Martins was not injured. He wasn't hurt. He ran off the pitch when he was asked to come off. There was nothing wrong with Martins. I don't know what the idea was taking off a player like Martins who gives you something going forward on the right side, why would you be taking them off and bringing on a defender down 2-0 when you're trying to get a goal and it's 70-some-odd minutes into the game? I, I don't see where that's coming from, really. If you're doing that in the 95th minute and it's 2-0, the 90th minute and it's 2-0, I could probably understand that. But to do that in the 70-some-odd minute or thereabouts, to take off Martins to bring on Matty Pollock, I, I just, I don't understand that one. And I just didn't understand the Watford performance today. It lacked identity, it lacked a focus, and it lacked cohesiveness. And I think for those reasons, Watford just were not in this game. But again, credit Middlesbrough. They deserved the victory. Middlesbrough's pressure on Watford definitely had an effect on the way Watford played this game. But even more importantly than that, the Watford attitude today was not there. The Watford purpose today was not there. The Watford identity today was simply not there. This has been the Yuans 10-Minute Take.